G'day. This is a Benchcrafted Moxon Vice. Now, if you're not familiar with Moxon Vices, these are one of the most useful pieces of kit any woodworker should have in their shop. Some of the great advantages are they're easy to use. You can put sections above the surface of your workbench, so if you're paring or anything like that, you can save your back. You can use it to to deal with tapered sections, or you can use one to deal with wide sections. During this video, we're going to show you how you can build your own mox and vice using a bench crafted mox and vice kit. The mox and vice is a really useful vice for doing fine work because it allows you to. Get, up, get the work up above the bench so you can, don't have to break your back. This particular vise, built by Benchcrafted from Iowa, is a relatively simple vise to build. What we might do first is have a look at what comes in the box. We'll open it up. Oh, look at that. First thing that you're presented with is a piece of crubber. Now, crubber is like a, uh, like a rubber compound that sticks to the, the jaws of the vise to stop, to help grip and to stop, um, you know, small dents and stuff on your work. We'll put that aside for the moment. You get two hand wheels, cast steel hand wheels. Very nice, very solid. And of course, you get a couple of bolt sections. Three quarter inch steel bolts nuts and a nice big washer. Now you'll notice that the box does not come with instructions but these are downloadable from the website. It's pretty comprehensive, it gives you the history of mox and vices, how to build it, drawings, all sort of sorts of stuff. So go to the website, download that and you'll be in business. Everything is in Imperial. So there's a little bit of complexity about how to make all the right calculations to cut out the wood but if you multiply one inch by 25.4 millimetres, you'll be fine. The dimensions for all the wood you need to cut for this vise is included in the instructions. Now it's pretty simple really, it's essentially three pieces of wood. I've used a bit of red gum here because that's what we had lying around the workshop. You got the back plate which is approximately 140 millimetres in height. You've got a front plate, which is 144 millimetres in height. And you've got what they call a, a stabiliser, which glues on the back. That's roughly 38 by 20, 28 millimetres, which will glue onto the back like so. This is all the material that you'll need to make this vise. Um, you can build a little table that fits off the back of the vise if you want to have a, a, a broader surface to work on but um, we won't be covering that in this video today. So once you've milled up your, your wood like so, the important part of this project is to mark out where to bore the holes for the bolts. One interesting little quirk about the material once you've cut it out is you'll see that the front vice section is about four millimetres higher than the rear vice section. The reason for this is because it allows, gives you a reference point when you're setting the mox and vice up on your bench. So you can just push it against it and clamp it down. But we'll cover that more as we build the vice. Now let's have a look at laying out the, the positions where we're going to bore our holes. Now you may have noticed that I've written the word top on the top of each section of the material here. The reason I've done that is so it makes it to remind myself how this fits together because essentially these two pieces of wood will go together like so. Now if I open this up and lay it out, I can mark out these two pieces of wood at the same time to ensure accuracy. What I'm trying to do here is make the marking out of the vice drilling points as simple as possible. So Front part of the vise, rear part of the vise. First thing I do is just make sure that this section here is evenly spaced off either end. So it's just a simple matter of saying, okay, 64 millimeters here, 
Depending on how you've marked your owl, how big you make your vise, you might follow the sizing in the instructions a little closer than I did. And 64, just tap it out. Then I can mark where that starts and then just mark it like so. So I know that's exactly where that fits. Rather than trying to sort of follow these reasonably detailed uh, marking out that they've used in the instructions, I'm going to mark out these two sections at the same time because I know they're right then. Now the instructions supplied by Benchcrafted notes that the, the hand wheel should be placed in millimetres, 140 millimetres inwards from the, the rear jaws end. So what I'm going to do is I've got these two pieces of wood aligned together as we did previously and I'm just going to mark out 140. I use a knife, it's a habit using a knife, much more accurate to use than a pencil. I'm just going to mark 140 millimetres from this end. And I'm going to come down this end of the wood and mark 140 millimetres again. Now for me, trying to work out what I have to make the difference on the shorter piece of timber is way too complex. So all I simply do is pick up a square and run that over, pick up my original knife mark, push the square right up to that mark and then mark that on the second piece of wood just lightly like so and I can do the same here a little trickier because I've got working away from myself pick up that first mark just mark it and transfer it to the far side Now because I've done these together, in situ, as they will look when they're finished, that's completely accurate. It's just a simple joinery technique. Now that we've marked out the longitude of the positions of the holes, we want to go ahead and mark out the latitude of the holes as well. Now according to the plans, we want to place the holes in the rear jaw right in the centre of the boards. So in this case, these boards, this rear board is 140 millimetres. So we're going to place that at 70 millimetres off the far edge. So we're just using, using a marking gauge. This one's produced by Lubin. I use a more traditional one personally, but these are great. Pick up 70 millimetres, soft tighten, 70 mil and tighten. Now, Keeping in mind, we don't want to sort of mark off any other edge, we want to work from one edge. So back to where I've written top, always stick to mark from the same edge that you marked out originally. It just helps build accuracy. So I've got my little scribe so I pick up where this longitude mark is, and I'm just going to scribe that line there. Do it on this one as well. So that gives us four very accurate positions to do our drillings. And now we've marked these crosshairs where the holes are going to be bored. On the rear jaw, it's very simple. We can just, using a brattle, we can just mark that hole. So we've got those two points there, and we know that's exactly where we have to drill. On the front one, however, it's a little bit more complicated. You'll see in the drawings that the front jaw hole for the bolt is a little elongated. Now this is to ease any racking or so forth when you're winding the vise in and out. Now I've tried to avoid making fun of the imperial system when building this vise because I don't want to be rude to our American brothers. I mean, but we, you did miss wa Mars one time with the deep space probe because of the problem with the imperial system, but I couldn't get past this little elongated hole that we have to drill. Comes in at 15 sixteenths of an inch. 
15 sixteenths of an inch. What the hell is 15 sixteenths? So I've actually had to work this out. 15, and if you're not familiar with this, it's just fractions. 15 divided by 16 gives you 0.9375 times 25.4 millimetres per inch. So that's a 23.8 millimetre wide thingy. This is why you missed Mars. Now the other little complication with this front vice hole is that it's 23.8 wide, but it's 19 millimetres high. So I don't have a 19 by 23.8 millimetre force in a bit. So we're going to have to improvise a bit to elongate that hole. Now it's, it's way too tight to drill two holes and even them out. So what we're gonna probably have to do is el elongate that hole by hand. The rear jaw's got a little complication as well. Well, a little detail that we need to add. We've got a 19 millimeter bolt that goes right through and holds this whole thing together. But the second nut has to be embedded into the surface, the inside surface of the rear jaw. So we're gonna to need to do a second boring well, in fact, technically, it'll be the first boring to accommodate this nut. Now, this nut, where's my ruler? Here it is. This nut is, say, roughly 33 millimetres. So we need to bore a 33 millimetre hole, square it up to accommodate the nut, and then bore the 19 millimetre hole afterwards in order to embed that nut into the rear jaw. What I've done here is bore the first hole in the rear jaw to accommodate the bolt. Set the drill press at 20 millimetres, bore away. We'll do the other one now. What I want to do now is bore through this in the second hole to accommodate the 19 millimetre section of rod. However, I don't want to bore right through because I risk tearing out the back. So what I'm going to do and I had one take a little standard drill bit and drill a hole through there first to create a pilot hole so I can drill a little from this side and drill a little from the back side to avoid any tear. So as we mentioned earlier, we need to relieve this 19 millimeter hole on the, on the front jaw to allow for any racking in the vise. It just eases the vise opening and closing when you're using it. So at 19, we need to open that up to 23.8 millimeters. So we can probably do that by hand using a rasp. So we're just gonna mark it out. So we add, coming off the outer edge, by 19, say 22 millimetres, 22.5 millimetres on either side. And that's going to give us the additional width 
that we need. So I'm just going to mark that out with my knife, just as a, a line, as a reference line. Some people may choose to try to double bore this. You might find that a bit complicated, especially in a timber like this. So I'm going to do this by hand. And to mark it out, so I get a better sense of, the, of what I'm trying to achieve, I'm just going to use the bolts itself to draw a little circular, just as a bit of a guide, like so. Good idea to do that on all four sides. So you can get that plane between the inner and outer edges uniform. All right, we're back here now. I've, uh, we've got our parts all machined out and we've filled, we've cut the little hole for the bolts and attached the little stabiliser bar on the back. So, and I've let that dry overnight, so it's nice and um, it's fixed very securely now. So, what we're going to do right now is, it, it's looking a bit grubby because we've been handling the piece. So I'm going to cut it back with a bit of sandpaper. We'll take off these hard edges and then we'll attach the crubber, which is this synthetic material which helps grip the piece that you're working on when you're using the Moxon vise. Right, we've cleaned up our surfaces now, all good wiped down, and we're going to glue on the crubber to the inward side of the front jaw using Quick Grip. I don't know if this product's any good. I bought it at Bunnings for 10 bucks, so, and the print on it's actually too small even with my glasses to read properly, but having used contact glue before, I'm hedging my bets that we're gonna be fine. All right, so I've let the contact glue dry for approximately half an hour. And so, if you know when it's ready, it's kind of touch dry, so to speak. What is touch dry? That's touch dry. All right, it's a loom skill. So, now if anything's going to go wrong with building this vise, it's now. Because the problem with contact glue is that once it makes contact, it sticks. So, I have to apply this very carefully in order to get a nice, even spread it's probably the most mundane part of building the vise, but it is the trickiest part as well. So I'm going to try this technique, which is the glues on the upper side is to reverse roll it like so. And then what I can do is um, have it in a way that I can control what I'm doing. Because once I place that onto the timber, um, it's going to bind, so we've just got to be really careful. I once made a table that was laminated with contact glue and it touched before it should have. Disaster, but we did survive. Um, I'm going to line it up with the top edge, okay, and the left hand edge, so wish me luck. All right. I wish I was wearing my glasses. Well, there you go, a benchcrafted Moxon vise built from Australian red gum. What a thing of beauty. So to learn more about this product, click on the links below. Um, follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and of course on YouTube. My name's John Madden. Thanks for watching.